So Andro Industries is dropping the Fury drone. That is an AI, an artificial intelligence wingman that's straight up redefining air power. Picture Fury shredding cartel subs in the Caribbean or outsmarting Chinese SAMs in a Taiwan clash. You want the details on this? Well, stick around for two hypothetical operations that'll blow your mind. And then I'll give you a story about learning about combat collaborative aircraft for the first time as I'm sitting in pilot training, hoping to get an F-15, F-22, or F-35. I'll break that all down, so stay to the end for that. So from hypersonic rocket tech to radars that cut through drone swarms, Andrel's not just keeping up with the giants like Raytheon and General Dynamics, they're setting the pace. So for me, as a former fighter pilot, having flown the F-15E in combat and the F-16 on the Thunderbirds, these cheaper, smart drones run by AI that could outgun a $100 million jet, to me, that's just smart. And it's something that we have to dial in, and that's what Andrew is doing as we speak. So to me, I look at Andrew kind of like the tech rebels that are shaking up defense. They were founded by Palmer Lucky. He sold Oculus for billions of dollars to Facebook, and then he pivoted to building war tech that actually delivers and is built for the person using the war tech, which is something I love as an operator, as a fighter pilot sitting in that cockpit. I want that to have a great user interface. I want everything I'm doing with my hands, with my eyes. I want it all to give me the best ability to kill the enemy and survive. And that to me is what Andrew is doing. So to me, they are the biggest disruptor in the space and we got to tip our hat to them. The Fury drone, that combat collaborative aircraft is actually scheduled to fly any day now, sometime in mid October. So that will launch here soon and to me, that completely redefine air power. Think of teaming up 10 Fury drones with the F-22, F-35, or the upcoming F-47, and you've essentially got an air power force that can't be reckoned with. You've got wingmen hiding in the shadows. For me, there were sometimes frustrations when your wingmen weren't doing what you wanted them to do. I was never that wingman, right? I was always the perfect wingman, of course. But sometimes when you're flying in combat, the wingman wasn't where you wanted them to be. So to me, having an AI wingman that's always there, now you know that you never have to wonder about where your wingman is. And that's always a pretty big debrief point in any debrief defensive counter air engagement or offensive counter air engagement in the Air Force. At some point, number two or number four is gonna get lost and you gotta go find them as the flight lead. But these drones aren't gonna get lost. To me, these things are gonna be the king predators of the sky, exactly on par, maybe even more stealthy than the F-35 and the F-22. And that's exactly what you want when you want what's called force multiplication. And that just means that you have one aircraft that could basically do the job of 10. So let's say you have one F-22 and now it's got 10 collaborative aircraft around it, now you're doing the job of multiple F-22s, and that's gonna save a ton of cash, and it's gonna be very combat effective. But what's the edge that Andrew actually has? Well, to me, it's the fact that they're lean, they're AI-driven, and there's no massive ballooning cost, like say the F-35 program, $428 billion budget. So at Andrew, things are more scalable, and they actually build the tech for the customer. So taxpayers don't pay for the prototypes at Andrew. They build those themselves. They build what is the most creative warfighting machine possible for the mission that's supposed to be done and then they just deliver it once the customer aka the US military gives them the green light and that's really cool because that means they can iterate they can do multiple iterations so think of a company building multiple f-35 and then just picking the best one the one that was the most efficient had the most combat capability and didn't cost as much and then at that point then the Pentagon steps in and they're like mmm what else you got oh you didn't like that f-35 check out this new f-35 it's got gold rims but Andrew to me stands out in the field of CCAs. They grabbed the contract last year and it looks to me like they're outpacing some of the legacy players, but they also play nice with the big defense behemoths. And to me, that's really cool. They're getting the best of both worlds. So Andrew seems to me to be steering that CCA ship with the Fury. The Fury seems to be leading the pack. And that is a semi-autonomous UCAF. That is an unmanned combat aerial vehicle. There's your first acronym for all you acronym hungry viewers out there. Trust me, I got you. But that thing can team up with F-35 or the NJAD, that next generation air dominance platform, and it's powered by Lattice AI. So this is the most interesting part. Lattice AI is basically a neural net that links the drones, the radars, and the jets into a lethal kill web. Palmer Lucky on X hyped it up saying that we're fielding autonomous fighters while others are stuck in PowerPoint, which it's totally true, which is so hilarious because the bureaucracy loves PowerPoint. Andrew's out there iterating, creating these systems, giving them to potential war fighters, testing them out, giving them to the person in the arena and actually seeing how they perform under pressure instead of giving some boring PowerPoint. I never made a PowerPoint for a general that I actually thought was worth my time. 
wait, I wonder if that's how they think of my videos. So I've flown missions where that bureaucracy, where you have to go through different things, different kill chains, different things that made it way more cumbersome to protect troops on the ground and to get the mission done. So with any type of advancements with this Lattice AI, with further and further adaptions of the Fury, the more that thing flies and the more it starts to integrate with other fighters, the better it's gonna get and the more seamless the communication between the jets and the drones are gonna get. And to me, eventually, it's just gonna become a part of your formation, just like a four ship flight lead. When I was leading a four ship of F-15Es, I would always be thinking, where is number three and four? What can I do with number three and four? Three and four, what would you even say your job is here? Are you out there just doing loops to music, listening to the Top Gun soundtrack? Even though that's awesome and I fully support that, I also need you to do your job. So those drones, think of teaming those up in a manner where you can target them seamlessly, maybe target them by looking at something and then pressing something on your HOTAS, which is your hands on stick and throttle, which allows you to then do other tasks. So you look outside and see multiple drones, you could just lock on and target with your thumb and then get those CCAs, those Furies, to lock on and target different chunks of the drone swarm. Let's say you target one of the Furies to the south side, one of the targets to the east side, and then you and number three and four take out the rest. That's something that I could see happening very seamlessly, and it's likely something that you would practice time and time again until it just becomes habit pattern. The thing I really like about Andrel is to me, they're like a tech first company. So they're not trying to do things in a bloated, expensive way. They wanna get the tech right first. So that Lattice AI, having that done and being able to intertwine that into all their different systems, it really gives them a leg up. I mean, when you think about Tesla, the full self-driving, at the end of the day, Tesla is kind of an AI or a full self-driving company. And then they're just infusing that and intertwining that into different cars, into different systems. So Android could just be doing that. So that next level situational awareness building AI into all their different platforms. And then you just plug and play and you allow it to get better as it goes out into the battle space and learns how the enemy acts and it learns how the friendly forces want it to act to support them as the blue team going up against the red team. Let's talk about the Fury a little bit. So that's the drone that's got the Air Force buzzing. It was acquired through Blue Force Technologies in 2023. And this thing is a beast just from seeing the photos and the videos of this thing. It's got roughly a 5,000 pound takeoff weight. It's got Williams FJ44 turbo fans that pump out about 4,000 pounds of thrust. It can hit Mach 0.95 in an unclassified number. It's likely going to pull more than nine Gs, but we don't have an exact number yet. So it could outmaneuver likely any fighter jet that's out there without a hiccup. And this brings up the story from pilot training. So there we are, we're sitting in a room, all the different weapon systems came through. The pilots from the F-22, the F-35, the F-15E, the F-16, the A-10, and they all pitched their systems on how capable they were. And it was awesome because as a young student getting ready to go fly fighter jets, all you can think about is getting into the cockpit of something fast. But then the last presentation definitely caught my attention. And it was someone from DARPA pitching the idea of a fully autonomous drone that could also sync up with other fighter jets or even be piloted by a dogfighting human. So having a pilot, let's say the top dogfighter in the squadron would basically be put inside of a simulator cockpit. But here's the catch. This person said they would actually be flying real aircraft in combat, going up against Russian Su-27s, going up against Russian Su-57s, Chinese J-20s, and they would be doing it all from the comfort and the air conditioning of their cockpit simulator. And they could pull 20, 30 Gs. They could be firing multiple AIM-9Xs. They could carry a lot more weapons than what typical fighter jets would carry. This person definitely caught my attention with this comment. And then they showed a picture of the actual cockpit setup itself. It was basically a 360 degree wraparound screen. So to me, would this be possible? Yeah, I think it would be. In the F-15E, we had a lot of simulators that had a 360 degree cover. So you could look up, you could look out of the top of the canopy. And that's exactly what you would need to do when it comes to a drone that would be fighting fighter jets. The biggest downside and the catch that likely Andrew is working on and has probably figured out at this point is the lag because if you're in a dogfight and you're even 0.5 seconds behind you would miss the cues of what the other fighter jet is doing and that would take you out of the weapons envelope to actually employ weapons on that other fighter jet so you got to make sure that that lag is taken care of and there isn't any delay from you putting in an input in that sim cockpit and that jet actually maneuvering and moving itself but yeah being able to fly a 20 30 g drone and then going up against su 27s and just taking them all down and then if you happen to crash you happen to get shot down all of a sudden you just regenerate because you've got multiple flying above you. 
This sounds like a video game that's a little bit too real. But back to the Fury, the range of that thing could be probably 2,000 nautical miles plus. The cost of it is probably somewhere around $20 million a unit, and that's way leaner than the F-35 at about $100 million a unit. So the Fury now becomes your AI wingman. It scans for threats, it jams enemy radars, it slings missiles, or it could even go kamikaze at the end if it had to, to protect some sort of friendly forces. And you could likely fly this thing into highly contested areas because at the end of the day, you're not risking a pilot's life. And then you could feed that information back to higher headquarters and basically learn about the enemy real time. So like I said earlier, the first flight is set for mid-October of 2025. And here's one really cool part about it. It's got a one button semi-autonomous launch. So it's all built on Andrew's own AI stack. There's no clunky ground stations, no weird battery packs. It's just an all-in-one contained unit. The Air Force is eyeing a thousand of these things by 2030 to create swarm ops with the Fury and other CCAs. So imagine these Furies running point during a defensive counter air or offensive counter air engagement when fighter jets are going into an airspace. They could clear the way for the fight. And with Andrew likely operating many of their systems in Ukraine right now, they're basically learning about the battle space and the airspace real time, which is just going to make the Fury even more capable. And when I think about the different types of drone swarms, the drone swarms from actual Furies, fighter jet sized drones, this would be a whole new style of drone swarms. And to me, this is just diabolical. And then I got to just highlight pulling more than nine Gs, let's say pulling 20, 30 Gs, nothing's going to be able to compete with that. And now at this point, it's just going to be drone versus drone and who can pull the most Gs. So it's finally happened. Top Gun 3 is now going to feature drone pilots. I knew this was bound to happen. And at this point, those drone pilots are probably going to steal Rooster and Hangman's girlfriend and there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> All right, let's roll into some hypothetical operations with the Fury leading the charge. So first, let's talk about a narco terror takedown off of Venezuela. F-35s are circling near the coast of Venezuela. That actually happened recently. But drug subs are ghosting through and they're trying to slip past. But a Fury swarm takes charge. Six Fury drones launch from an Aegis destroyer. Lattice AI on board pings the wakes of narco subs. Then those Furies dive down to 500 feet above the water surface and they fire micro-sized missiles into the water. And then boom, they turn those narco subs into a reef in seconds. At this point, no F-35s needed to get close to Venezuela, but then what if there were cartel scouts along the shore to see if their drugs got hit? The Fury could continue to loiter and then lock onto them using facial recognition and then call in hellfires from Furies themselves or from MQ-9s operating in the area. This whole operation would be done in 20 minutes, zero losses, 2,000 kilos plus of drugs smashed. Okay, now let's move to hypothetical scenario number two, and that is the Fury dominates in the Taiwan Straits. This would be a full-up throwdown from China. J-20s and HQ-9 SAMs are popping off. Fusion carriers are spitting out J-35 stealth jets. An F-35 package is inbound, but this whole area is a kill zone. So the Fury drones lead the swarm. There's an F-35 package inbound to help defend the Straits, but the entire place is a kill zone due to China's massive SAM nets. The Fury drones lead the swarm, eight of them out in front of the F-35. Their onboard radars catch hypersonic weapons 200 miles out and fire countermeasures. One Fury baits a SAM and uses decoy tactics to project its location somewhere else in the battle space. Lattice AI then directs the pack to flank the Chinese fighters that are inbound. And not only the fighters, but the PL-15 missiles fired from those fighters are now 50 nautical miles out. But no worries for the Fury. They launch countermeasures for these PL-15s as well. And an unlucky fisherman happened to be trapped below the battle space, looks up and sees those missiles explode about 50 50,000 feet up. So in this showdown, Fury was the shield that flipped the entire fight. And if this were to play out, Andrew would essentially rewrite the game on air power. But let's talk a little bit about solid rocket motors, the SRM. That's Andrew's rocket fuel for the Fury. It's teamed with Raytheon and they fire a highly loaded grain motor. Andrew teamed with Raytheon to build this motor at their Mississippi plant. And this motor is a beast, 30% more propellant in the same exact casing. So what's the point of building these rocket motors onto the Fury? Well, the faster you can get your jet or your drone, your CCA, and then launch air to air missiles, the faster that missile is is going to be going towards the target. And if you can get your missile going faster than the enemies, you're going to splash them first and you're going to survive. So this thing could get the fury up to altitudes and air speeds that just continually smoke China's best fighters. So the fury's modular bays would open up and pop these things off like rockets at Chinese New Year. They would outrange the Chinese PL-15s with ease. Andrew is said to be scaling up to about 100,000 of those engines in about the next year. So that shows that they're going to have mass of production and they're going to be ready for not only a tech heavy fight, but also 
a fight that includes massive amounts of numbers. So as we've seen through conflicts recently, drones are the new king and the CCAs are the alpha predator of those kings. There's no better way to say it. The Fury is leading the charge and it's gonna be very exciting to see how the Fury teams up with fifth gen and sixth gen assets. I'll keep you updated as this Fury releases and hopefully release some more footage and some more breakdowns of the Fury itself. Thanks so much for watching guys. Really appreciate you being here. What do you think of the Fury? What do you think the mission of this thing will mainly be? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, the best comment you can give me is just watch this video right here. When you watch this video right here, it helps the channel grow a lot and I greatly appreciate it. So I'll see you on this video right here. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, signing off.